Unless you live under a rock somewhere, you are fully aware that last night was the President's State of the Union address. This has been a crazy week. It's only Wednesday. It's going to be crazier by the end of the week. There's so much stuff is going on, and, and uh, right in the middle of it, the President gives his State of the Union address. And uh, whether you liked it or hated it, whether you're for him or against him, uh, I wanted to give you just a couple of thoughts today, uh, really my takeaways from the State of the Union. My takeaways from the State of the Union. Now, if you want deep political analysis, you're going to have to go somewhere else. There are a lot of people who are doing that. That's not me. Um, and that's not even what I'm trying to do right now. But there were some takeaways personally for me as I watched the State of the Union delivery, as I listened to what was said, and as I watched the people who were in the room. Uh, what a crazy, crazy environment, particularly as we're uh, coming through this impeachment trial and all the stuff that's going on around that. What a, what a crazy, insane kind of political environment. But there were some things that were done last night um, that, I don't know if I would say connected with me or taught me some things or maybe uh, re-illustrated some things that I already know. And I wanted to share those real quick. Uh, I even wrote them down so I wouldn't forget them. But the first one is this. Caring for people always counts. Caring for people always counts. Counts. One of the things that the president does really, really well, um, other presidents, of course, have done this in the State of the Unions, is to demonstrate a national concern for people, for young people, for older people, for those who have served our country, for those who are serving our country, for the families of those who are serving our country, whether in the military or in the first responder community. Uh, for uh, those who have been a voice for conservatism. Uh, all of these things and all of these areas the president not only talked about last night, but illustrated through individuals, through families, through folks who are involved in uh, these various areas. And, and again, this isn't about the, politi the, the politics of all of that, uh, but, but this truth. In a room that is, is, was extremely divided politically, extremely partisan, it couldn't be more partisan, one thing that most people, not all people, but most people could agree on, could stand and clap together about, was the fact that in the United States we have some incredible uh, individuals, some incredible families, folks who are doing their best to serve others. And when you care for people, then when you demonstrate care for people, that counts. And it always counts. And those are the highlights for many people of the speech that was given last night. And in our own lives, we need to remember uh, facts and figures and, and policies and all that stuff is really, really important. But what really matters is caring for people. Caring for people always counts. Here's the next thing. It's kind of connected to that. Communication is best when it reaches its intended target. Uh, this was important for me to see last night. Communication is best when it reaches its in intended target. I was sitting on the couch watching the speech with my kids, and one of my kids said, uh, President Trump is not a great speaker, and he has definitely a, a real stiff, um, very personal-to-him style of communication for sure. He's not what we would call maybe a polished speaker or communicator. But what he does well <laughs> is he speaks to his intended target. He has the ability to speak beyond the rhetoric, beyond the noise, beyond the politics in the room, beyond the fact that uh, half the people there hate him and half the people there love him and some people are even a little bit indifferent. He speaks beyond that to the intended target. He makes normal people feel like he understands what they're going through. In our lives, that's what matters. Your communication, what you're saying, the words that you're using, uh, the message that you're delivering, it needs to connect with the intended target. If you're speaking to your kids, speak in a way they can understand what you're saying. To your spouse, speak in a way they can understand what you're saying. Outside of that, speak in a way that your intended target that you've already identified can understand. That's what makes a speech, that's what makes communication truly impactful. Uh, what a great illustration of that last night. Here's a third thing. Uh, a little darker. <laughs> Human nature is not dependent on station or background. Human nature is not dependent on nature or, or station, rather, or background. Our human nature, uh, that part of us that makes us who we are as humans, is not connected in any way to where we came from. Uh, we saw both good displays and bad displays of 
the behavior of human nature last night. And I'll tell you this, bitterness and anger and frustration, hate, all of these things that we talk about, they exist in the heart of all of us. Some of us do a better job than others of, uh, of keeping those things under control. But the display of that that we saw last night, of all of those things, and I'll let you figure out who you thought was doing a better or worse job of that. Uh, but the display of all of those things, kind of the outpouring of, uh, of the deep recesses of the heart, the human nature that we try to keep at bay, uh, it does not have any connection to where you came from, what your stature is in life, how much influence you have. Uh, people can be ugly and hateful and bitter regardless of where they came from. That was an interesting thing to observe last night. We need to know that and we need to be careful with that. We need to know that that applies to us as well as the other people that we interact with and connect with. Here's another thing, the fourth thing. Uh, moving forward is possible even if the other people in the room aren't coming with you. Moving forward is possible even if the other people in the room aren't coming with you. Uh, again, uh, regardless of what you think about our president, it is undeniable at this moment in history that the various areas that we care about nationally are doing really, really well. The president started off his speech by giving a laundry list of accomplishments. Now, again, we could argue, are those accomplishments coming off the heels of someone else's accomplishments? And what does that look like in the future? And all those things we argue. Uh, the one thing we can't argue is that, that at this moment in time, the United States is doing very, very well as a nation. And it's possible to move forward, to make progress, even if people are trying to hold you back. We've seen this illustrated so well. Here's the takeaway for me personally. Sometimes in my life, I'll say this. If only the other people around me would help me, would support me, would get behind me, would stop dragging me down, I could do something important. What we saw last night was a president who stood up and said, Hey, I know a bunch of you don't like me, and some of you are trying to stop me, but we're moving forward. Policy aside... What a great illustration of moving forward, even when those in your life don't necessarily want to go with you. The last thing uh, that I took away from this uh, is this. Just something to keep in mind. This whole thing, <laughs> politics, uh, politics uh, how people lead our country, and, and whether the economy is good or bad, and, and all of these metrics we like to use, all of this is extremely cyclical. We can look back over our history and understand we've had good times and bad times, uh, prosperous times and not so prosperous times. We're in a very prosperous time right now. If history is any teacher, eventually we'll come into a less prosperous time. But we need to remember moments like this when we're in moments like that. In our lives and in our country, we must remember that things go in cycles. As good as it is right now, we need to plan for when it's not so good. When it's not so good, we shouldn't lose hope because eventually we will come back around. Everything operates in cycles. That's in your life. That's in our national political system. Uh, that's in business. Every area of life, there are cycles. Let's not, keep, uh, let's not forget that. Keep that in mind. Uh, be happy when things are good. Plan for when they're not so good. When they're not so good, uh, hold out hope because eventually it will come back around. A lot of things were said last night. Uh, some good, some not so good. Some I agreed with, some I didn't agree with. I'm sure you're the same way. Overall, I thought it was a fantastic speech. Um, but I try to look beyond the words that are being said and make some application, uh, grab some takeaways that apply to me personally. And I wanted to share those with you today. Hopefully they're a help to you and uh, look forward to talking again. Thank you.